York Times report on then businessman Trump losing a billion dollars in the late 1980s and 90s isn't exactly new. The president himself talked about it publicly on The Apprentice about 15 years ago. It wasn't always so easy. About 13 years ago, I was seriously in trouble. I was billions of dollars in debt. Well, 2020 Democrats like John Delaney, hoping to unseat the president next year, say it proves he's not fit to be the commander in chief. The former congressman saying, quote, Trump is even less qualified to talk about capitalism than Bernie, a reference to the self-described Democratic Socialist, Senator Bernie Sanders. Let's talk about it with senior political analyst Britt Hume here to discuss. Britt, great to have you. Thank you, Shannon. A lot of people have pointed out back in the 90s, this was heavily reported on in real time about Trump. So oh, yeah. we knew and, this. And he, you know, he wrote a famous book, The Art of the Deal, but he also wrote a book called The Art of the Comeback, in which he describes what dire straits he was in. And, and the reviews of it at the time said what he said, that he was that he was billions in debt. The Times, I think, said that he was a billion in debt. So so he has he has either bragged, if that's the right word, I think at the time that he was writing, the, writing about his comeback, he wanted to magnify, as he does nearly everything, the size of the debt he was in. So the idea that he was in debt and, and had, you know, gone belly up on a bunch of his real estate enterprises is hardly new. Well, I feel like we're glossing over one big thing, which is where did this information come from? I mean, what, what, what steps did somebody take to get this to the Times if it's something that hasn't been exposed before? They say this is, these are tax documents, and I don't know where you would get that. Well, presumably this is this is a material drawn from his tax returns, right, over a period of years. It's some kind of analytical papers that come out of the IRS. That's the only place it could come from. And, of course, that's not supposed that to happen. But uh, this being Washington uh, in this era, everything seems to leak. And now this has. Okay. Uh, Fox News poll on releasing tax returns asked whether the president of the United States should be re releasing his returns. Seventy-four percent say he should. Twenty-one percent say should not. Five percent don't know. I mean, two thirds of the or excuse me, three quarters of the respondents there saying this guy should cough up his tax returns. Yeah, that that's an interesting number, and it's about what I would imagine people would say. People always want more information, you know, normally do. But we had an election when was, this was an issue, and he refused, and was the first president in some time to refuse to release his tax returns. He didn't do it. He stubbornly refused. The polls showed that that wasn't a popular stance, and he got elected. So here we are again, and I suppose, you know, the people who held it against him before will hold it against, hold it against him again, but I'm not sure there's any more gold in those hills for, for people who are seeking further to uh, turn sentiment against him. Well, today we watched as on the, on the Hill, this played out, this contempt vote with respect to the Attorney General. The Attorney General late last night on our show, we had breaking news coming into the show that he was going to advise the President, hey, you might want to uh, exert executive privilege over these documents. And so the President's done it. Uh, and yet this proceeding, this vote proceeds today on contempt. Um, where do we go from here? Well, I don't think, I think we go nowhere, frankly. I mean, I don't know that the full House will, will vote to do this, which it now would have to do. but. I wouldn't rule it out. But if it does, what happens then? And the answer seems to be, based on most recent experience, absolutely nothing. Eric Holder, you'll recall, was held in contempt during the previous administration, and that was the end of it. Um, you know, you can refer the matter to the Department of Justice, where the Attorney General could decide whether to arrest himself, I suppose. Mm -hmm. One does not anticipate that would happen. Um, I don't think that the Sergeant of Arms of the House of Representatives is going to go marching with a, some kind of a SWAT team down to the Justice Department to try to, to you know, haul the attorney general out to punish him for, for, for his contempt of Congress. So it's a toothless sanction, really. And, um, you know, you'd rather not have it in your Wikipedia entry, I suppose. But uh, beyond that, there's not much to it. Well, and, you know, Democrats are pointing to everything that they say this White House is doing, telling people not to testify, not to turn over documents. They're fighting subpoenas. The Trump family is fighting subpoenas. Um, Philip Klein writing this in the Washington Examiner. He says Republicans should be aware, however, that any principles that Trump establishes in rebuffing congressional investigators could be used or further built upon by future Democratic presidents seeking to avoid scrutiny from Republicans in Congress. Republicans should not see defending Trump on every matter as necessary, even if they believe that the Robert Mueller report vindicated him on the Russia issue. I'm not sympathetic to real stonewalling. I think Congress has an important oversight function, and within reason, Congress should be, should be accommodated. But um, this business here, what, what, think of what we're fighting over right at the moment, Shannon. We're fighting over a tiny sliver of the Mueller report, which remains redacted. Um, and, the, and the people who are doing the fighting uh, aren't even, haven't even read the portions that are now fully now available. We're fighting over the difference between the word spy and the word surveil, 
right, which is a synonym, and 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 we're and we're fighting, you know, over other extremely ma minor matters. Um, and I, my own sense about it is that the public out there looks at this and thinks, what are they fussing about all that stuff for? Endlessly. Well, it looks like this uh, administration is taking a, a page out of those who would try to frustrate this administration, which is tying most of this stuff up in court. So that'll keep us busy for another year or two. Well, and, and if this time it goes to the courts, um, we'll be way into the 2020 yep. election year before it's... I'll be covering it over there, down the street at the Supreme Court. Yeah, you'll, you I'll will. see you there. You'll have long days. <laughs> we will. Late nights. Britt, thank you so much. Good Always great sure. to have you. Thank you.